In this video, I want you guys to take a few minutes to consider the possibility that Bitcoin could one day go to zero. Now, this video isn't supposed to be FUD. I just want you guys to be aware of some of the potential risks and the headwinds that Bitcoin could face as it's not too big to fail, even though I think that's very unlikely and I'm very bullish on Bitcoin and cryptocurrency overall. But I think we learned six months ago, if we only ever look at one side of the equation, if we only sat there thinking Bitcoin is going to 100K plus, maybe our portfolios wouldn't be so wrecked as they are at the moment. So my goal of this video is just to get you guys to consider the possibility so that when you're making investment decisions, you can do it with a balanced point of view and not this bias that Bitcoin is an up only asset. As the truth is, we don't know where it goes from here. We can try and predict, but ultimately, as has been shown over the past six to nine months, absolutely no one knows where Bitcoin is going. No one knows where the new bottom is. No one knows where the new top is going to be. No one knows if the all-time high is in forever. So in this video, I just want to run through a few things that I think are worth considering, that are worth keeping in mind when you're investing in Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies. So the chart in front of me at the moment is the Bitcoin weekly uh, chart with uh, log turned on. I can see at the moment we are hovering just below $20,000 and uh, my gut feel is $20,000 isn't going to hold. Um, but when you see it, it kind of in this perspective, it doesn't look that bad. You know, this actually looks quite healthy after a massive leg up. We're just coming down a bit to previous all time highs. Maybe we'll come down to this one instead. It doesn't look too bad technically, but that doesn't mean it won't go to zero. I mean, if we go to the next chart I've got here, this looked pretty damn healthy as well. And then guess what? We went to zero. So I'm sure many of you are familiar with what happened with Luna and Terra. And I'm not saying that's what's gonna to happen to Bitcoin, but it does show how quickly things can change despite what the technical graphs or charts might be saying. So one of the common arguments I see is that Bitcoin is now too big to fail. Um, well, my counter argument to that is I'm sure many of you guys will recognize some of the brands on this page. Now, this is just a tiny, tiny sample of some of the logos that I was looking at this morning. But let's take, for example, uh, companies such as MySpace and Friends Reunited. Guess what? They're pretty much non-existent anymore. They've been replaced by Facebook and Twitter. You know, these, these at the time, MySpace was huge. No one ever thought it could be replaced and then all of a sudden it's gone. And then we've got big internet providers like AOL. Okay, they're still about at the moment, but compared to the early days when AOL was pretty much the provider for the vast majority of people connecting to the internet, now they have a tiny, tiny percentage of the market. That also applies to search engines. For any of you guys that are about when the internet was really starting to take off, we had a wide range of search engines to choose from. We had AskGs.com, we had AltaVista, we had is there another one called Lycos, and I'm sure you guys have used others. And guess what? We're all now using Google. Maybe the occasional person is using Bing if they forgot to change the default browser when they installed Microsoft Windows. Uh, maybe some people are still using Yahoo, but Google is the big player. We also have Internet Explorer. Everyone was using Internet Explorer to access the web. Now we're all using Chrome or Firefox or whatever it is, but very few people are using Internet Explorer. Then you've got the big mobile phone manufacturers, you know, BlackBerry, who were dominating the business world. You never thought they'd be replaced. And Nokia, who were dominating the consumer world. Both of those are now really, really struggling. Blockbuster, I mean, say no more, Blockbuster. <laughs> and then things like Toys R Us and Polaroid. So things can change and companies that you think could never fail can fail. And that applies to Bitcoin as well. Things like Luna failed out of the blue, it failed. Yes, some people could say they predicted that, but I'm sure people will say the same thing if Bitcoin ever does the same thing and fails or goes to zero at some point. So that is the first thing I wanted to raise is that Bitcoin is not too big to fail. I don't care how much money is invested at the moment. If things start turning south, the rats will desert the ship pretty quickly. Uh, the next big headwind that I see facing Bitcoin is energy consumption. So to secure the Bitcoin network, they have miners and miners use up an awful lot of energy. And I think one of the headlines I saw recently said it used as much energy as Argentina does in a year. So it's using quite a bit of energy. But what you can see here is recently with the price drop, the amount of energy being consumed, so the number of miners trying to mine Bitcoin has dropped off. So what that shows is miners are making less money. So I think you've got two issues here. One, the amount of energy is required to actually secure a large Bitcoin, a growing 
Bitcoin infrastructure, that's going to keep going up and up. And so far from what I've said, the people that have any control over Bitcoin um, aren't open to changing their consensus mechanism. They, they are not looking to move away from proof of work to something like proof of stake or some alternative technology. So they are committed to proof of work. So you have this huge issue that Bitcoin requires a massive amount of energy in an environment where we have global warming. So a lot of governments are making the decisions that are trying to reduce energy consumption. Some states are banning it. I think I've got a, an article here. I can't remember which one, this one here. I think New York have just banned um, proof of work and mining. And I don't think they'll be the last people to do that. So from a government perspective, this is not good. They want to reduce energy consumption. But you also have the issue at the moment is the rising cost of energy. So if energy costs so much, you could make the argument about that a lot of Bitcoin is mined from renewable energy resources, but that still costs money. So if it becomes too, or if it's not cost effective to mine Bitcoin, the number of miners will drop off as we're seeing at the moment. So the counter argument to that will be, well, if the number of miners drop off, they will change the difficulty so that the people that are still mining are still making decent rewards. The problem here is what happens if that happens quickly? Because at the moment, I think Bitcoin recalculates the difficulty of mining every two weeks. And in the space of those two weeks, there could easily be a run on Bitcoin enough to cause people to lose trust in it overall. So if the miners drop off, who's going to be there to secure the network? And the argument will be, well, there'll always be a certain amount of miners. What happens if that number drops low enough that then Bitcoin becomes vulnerable to a 51% attack? And then all of a sudden, even more trust is lost within Bitcoin and potentially the price will just keep going down. Now, I'm not saying this is hap going to happen. I'm not saying this is likely to happen. I'm just saying it's just one out there theory that you guys should be aware of because anything you're invested in, you should really be aware of all of the risks to that. And I think, it, I think energy consumption and the requirement of miners to have to secure the network is quite a big risk to Bitcoin overall. The next thing that I want to look at is regulation. Now, I don't really see this as a risk to cryptocurrency overall. I see it as a good thing as regulation will mean more wide stream adoption, but it could mean a big risk for Bitcoin, depending on what that regulation says and depending on how Bitcoin, the people that run Bitcoin react to that. If they are inflexible, but everyone else isn't, then people will move away from Bitcoin to the coins that are regulated correctly and they'll want to invest in those instead so i don't think regulation is a bad thing for cryptocurrency in general but it could be a bad thing for cryptocurrencies that refuse to change to fit in with whatever the regulation may end up being so that is something to keep in mind uh, this next one is a bit more random i was watching a new series on netflix over the weekend called the pirate gold of adak island where they're searching for gold that was buried over a hundred years ago and this got me thinking about bitcoin can i imagine in 100 years, Bitcoin still being here in its current form, you know, unless it has massive evolution from its current technological state and the way that it works, I can't imagine Bitcoin being here. I can easily see it being replaced by either a superior crypto or a superior tech that we haven't even seen yet. So when I thought about it like this, you know, these guys are digging for gold and I know people have got their own viewpoints on gold and whether to invest in gold. And if you invest in it, you don't make that money over a long period of time. I get all of that but gold still has an intrinsic value. Bitcoin at the moment doesn't. So can you really see Bitcoin existing in 100 years? I personally don't. I could see it being great in the next five or 10 years, but 100 years, I think at some point Bitcoin will go to zero or be replaced because in its current form, I don't think it's sustainable despite the fact of opportunities that it does offer and decentralization and stuff like that. But overall, when I compare it to an intrinsic value like gold, which is still going to be worth something in 100 years. There's every chance that Bitcoin won't be. Um, and the final risk, which the argument will be that this is why Bitcoin is here in the first place, is that central banks are launching their CBDCs. So a lot of countries are now investigating and eventually looking to launch their own CBDC, which is a central bank digital currency. And I'll just read the what is quickly. Central bank digital currencies are digital tokens similar to cryptocurrency issued by a central bank. They are pegged to the value of that country's fiat currency. So they have a number of advantages over traditional currency as it's all digital. Um, but you guys can do your own research into CBDCs. But certainly 
This is potentially a risk to Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, but at the same time, it could also be fuel for them as well as it brings more people into this way of working. And like I said at the start of the video, this isn't saying that Bitcoin is gonna to go to zero. This isn't about saying that Bitcoin is dead. It's just saying that there are some risks and we don't know how those risks are gonna play out, whether it's gonna be for the good or for the bad of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies in general. I think I have a lot of conviction that cryptocurrency is here to stay. I think I have less conviction that Bitcoin is gonna remain the big boy and the one that everyone knows. Just from looking at these logos, you know, I've lived through these times when I felt like these companies were irreplaceable and they've been replaced. And I can see the same thing with Bitcoin being replaced by a superior tech that is easier for people to access because currently cryptocurrency in Bitcoin has huge usability issues. If you're replaced with a superior tech with superior usability, then I could easily see a scenario where Bitcoin will devalue massively and potentially fail and go to zero. So that's what I wanted to cover in this video, just some random thoughts about the risks to Bitcoin. If you found this video useful, I'd appreciate it to hit that like button. If you wanna see more from me, subscribe to the channel. And what I'm gonna do now is pop up a video showing you guys how to buy Bitcoin if I haven't scared you off enough already and you're committed to Bitcoin. There's a how-to guide video that I'm gonna pop up and I recommend you guys give that a watch.